Inland Valley's cooking demo. Uh, today we're going to be doing hard boiled eggs and we're going to talk about some of the health benefits and how to prepare them to avoid getting that green uh, layer we often see on the outside of the yolk. So let's begin by actually talking about what that green layer is. Um, most people think that, oh, it's just a bad egg. Uh, a lot of the kids that I work with think, oh, it must have been rancid or something like that. But the green layer that forms on the outside of a hard-boiled egg sometimes is actually the sulfur compounds that are within the yolk. And the way to avoid this is essentially we don't want to overcook our egg and we want to cool it immediately. So both of these uh, maybe novices to cooking hard-boiled eggs um, you know, may not do and so most of the time they'll get a green layer. But if done right you'll just see a perfect yellow and white layer to the egg. So one of the things behind not overcooking is to probably cook for about nine to 10 minutes on boiling. And I'll show you what the difference is between simmering and boiling in a little bit. And then when it comes to cooling down, you can have a bowl of cold water so that you can dunk the eggs in just to bring that temperature down and to prevent the chemical process that brings the sulfur out to the edge of the yolk. Now if you don't have uh, you know, a, a nice machine, you can also use just cold running water and run that over the eggs. However, in my experience, it takes a lot more time and it's not as effective um, just because you can't bring the temperature down as far as you need to. When it comes to the egg itself, we have two different areas. We have the the center yolk and then the white flesh which is a, a very complete protein. Now some of the health benefits of this is that that complete protein actually means it has a lot of essential fatty acids which are essentially nutrients that our body needs that it can't produce. Um, also in the yolk itself it does have some good things like B vitamins um, and choline which are other nutrients that your, your body needs but on the other hand it does have a little bit more cholesterol so at first glance you might think oh cholesterol uh, I don't want that in my system cholesterol is bad of course if you have you know a doctor recommendation to reduce your cholesterol you want to consult them or a dietitian first but when it comes to eggs um, we'll discuss the difference between a healthy cholesterol and a bad cholesterol. So what otherwise is known as a healthy cholesterol is high density uh, lipoprotein or HDL cholesterol. And what is known as a bad type of cholesterol is low density lipoprotein and that is referenced as LDL cholesterol. So when we think of a bad cholesterol um, or LDL cholesterol it is bad because it tends to bunch up in our arteries so when enough of it accumulates it can cause certain blockages um, of red blood cells or platelets or whatever is in your your vein so the good reason or the the, the beneficial part of a high density uh, lipoprotein is um, that Fats attract fats, so this high density uh, lipoprotein is can essentially go through your arteries and sweep up or attract some of that um, LDL or bad cholesterol and in turn cleans your arteries. It doesn't mean to say that you should have a lot of cholesterol in your diet, there are certain limits to what you should have, but cholesterol is needed, uh, for example, to uh, produce vitamin D. And a lot of Americans are actually deficient in vitamin D right now. Um, so there are some nutritional benefits to cholesterol. However, if you have high cholesterol, you might want to consult 
your doctor or dietitian on you know other ways to improve it. All right, so let's get to actually making our hard boiled eggs. I just want to show you the difference between simmering and boiling. The simmer is actually just a small collection of bubbles that you might see percolating from the top, as opposed to boiling, which would be you know larger bubbles that are turning over the water. So I, I usually like to use a ladle instead of just dropping it in. You don't run the risk of actually cracking the egg when you, you put it in. So I'll just kind of submerge it and then slowly turn it over like this. Oh, see the temperature difference there actually cracked the egg. Let me take that one out. Well, you can leave it in. It just looks a little messy. Alright. Do that one. That one. And that one. As you can see, the egg whites are already cooking here. But we'll clean that up, you know, once we take these eggs out. Um, so essentially you want to leave these eggs to boil for about 9 to 10 minutes. Um, it'll start boiling again once the, the temperature rises because, you know, the cold eggs briefly bring down the water temperature. So we'll check back in in 10 minutes and um, then chill our eggs and see how they turn out. So as I mentioned before, you know, these eggs are pretty healthy when you consider, you know, most people fry their eggs in the morning, um, you know, using butter or some type of oil, not to mention all the dishes and all that fun. But um, when you hard boiled an egg, I mean, you're essentially just using water, so you're missing out on some of the maybe the negative effects of using butter like extra salt and cholesterol and not to mention you can make a dozen of them you know for the whole week and just kind of grab and go for let's say you know a breakfast snack so let's crack this one open see what we got And I've noticed sometimes too, um, if you use eggs that are fresh, sometimes it's a lot harder to take off the shell. The, the egg whites will sometimes want to go with it if it's too new of an egg. So, you know, if you're kind of getting late in the expiration date and, you know, you don't have any need for the eggs, that's when I usually like to to make them or if I just have too many of the eggs I use the, the oldest bunch but let's cut it cut it open and see what it looks like as we said before we shouldn't see any um, green on the outside that's the sulfur that's accumulating and as you see it's a perfectly cooked hard-boiled egg now I set aside one egg uh, that I, we didn't cool down using the chilling method. So let's kind of take a look and see if we're able to produce that sulfur, sulfur ring that um, most people see. This might be a little hot. Ooh. Okay, just a little more, not too bad. Okay, let's crack it open and see. Hmm, alright, so you're seeing it a little bit there. It might be tough to see. Let's see, it's gonna focus. So you're seeing some graining on the edges, or on the outside. This one wasn't so bad though. But, um, yeah, when you overcook it, Possibly 
it's not as green as you know sometimes it can be just because we didn't overcook these eggs um, but as you see just by cooling it you'll see a difference um, in some of that greening so if we take an example from our other egg see we don't let's see, get focus we don't see any of that sulfur accumulating on the surface it's a nice yellow color Guys enjoyed this uh, food demo lesson um, remember that eggs are a great source of protein they have a lot of great nutrients like amino acids and B vitamins vitamin D good cholesterol um, I personally like to just get a bowl and stick a bunch of my hard-boiled eggs in it and use it as a snack during the day um, it'd be good for kids too. If they like hard boiled eggs, they can just grab one and they're just ready to go. Um, you would probably want to only keep them for about a week or so, a week and a half, I would say, um, before you'd want to, you know, toss them. But I uh, hope you enjoyed this recipe and have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.